As much as I love my Xbox One and my Nintendo Switch, I would be lying if I didn't say that PlayStation 4 dominated when it came to exclusives, and they're not done. They're still going, son! So this is five PlayStation 4 games that I am most excited for, and you should be too. But you know what else I'm really excited for? Walking Dead! The new season starts end of this year, as well as Stranger Things and a bunch of other really cool stuff like Mario Odyssey coming out, but that's off topic. Speaking of Walking Dead, did you know the official mobile game of Walking Dead is No Man's Land? and it's actually really fun. It kind of plays like XCOM and Mario and Rapids and those kind of games. So as I said, this game is sponsoring the video and I'm really thankful for that. So let's talk about it for a little bit. So the overworld kind of dealio that you've got going on is kind of like the Age of Empire civilization kind of games where you build camps, you have your home base where your survivors live, you build farms and camps and camper vans and workshops and tents and a bunch of other things and they all give you stuff. In fact, I actually haven't claimed my food today. So how about I do that before they all starve? The more stuff that you build here means the better upgrades you can get, the better weapons you can get, the better survivors you can get, the more survivors you can get, that kind of dealio. You get access to a bunch of random survivors that you find along the way, but you also get the hero survivors. Like right now on my team, I have Abraham, Eugene, and Tara that you might recognize from the series. And you can actually get all the series characters and cast in the game, which is kind of cool. I have Daryl, but I don't use him. I have Glenn, but I don't use him. Why don't I use them? I haven't leveled them up enough and I can't be bothered to. And depending on the characters, they all have their own individual traits and abilities, things that they do in battle. So let's talk about the battle. What happens when you go on one of these quests? As you can see here, it's very much like XCOM where you plan your moves out. I'm very powerful right now, so I'm going to mow these things down pretty quick. But you move your characters one step at a time, then the zombies will get their turn to move. They're not, they don't even know that I'm here yet, so they didn't get to move. Sucks to be them. So you go around each level, looting areas, collecting loot, and killing the zombies, and trying not to die yourself. It's a really addictive game that's actually a lot of fun to play, but the thing that I like the most about it is it really does feel like an extension from the Walking Dead universe. It does feel like it's a quality official game where you're playing as these characters in an actual Walking Dead zombie apocalypse type situation. Even between console games and other mobile games, you don't really get to play as these characters in any game. So if you've ever wanted to play as Rick or Michonne or anyone from the video games and never really had a chance to do so, Walking Dead No Man's Land is your chance to do that. So if you want to check this game out, there'll be a link in the description below. I really appreciate Walking Dead for sponsoring this video. It means a lot to me. Let's get started. Now at this E3 just gone, we saw a glimpse at the new Spider-Man game. Why am I so excited for this Spider-Man game? Well, if the trailer didn't speak for itself, we haven't had a quality Spider-Man game, in my opinion. I mean, there's been a couple possible ones, but the best last one was Spider-Man 2 for PlayStation 2 and Xbox, and I'm pretty sure GameCube. And the reason why it was just so great was it, such, it was such an intuitive Spider-Man game. Like, when you think of Spider-Man mechanics, when you break it down to its bare essentials, what do you have when you have Spider-Man? You have a hero that can shoot web from his left and right hand. And in that game, on the PlayStation 2, Xbox One, and GameCube, left trigger, right trigger, left arm, right arm. And it was just so intuitive. It was so fun to swing around the city. You could shoot that building, you could shoot that building, you could shoot both buildings at once and pull yourself like that. You could hold on to webs for as long as you want. You could let one go. You could do a bunch of crazy things. And what it led to was you being able to master being a web slinger, master traversing the city as Spider-Man, feeling amazing while you were doing it, going to the highest heights and jumping down and swinging at that last second. There was so much you could do in that game that made you feel like Spider-Man. I was just saying to Billy as we're standing here in New York City, that I'm feeling nostalgic just because of how much I played Spider-Man 2 growing up. I spent so much time swinging in this city that being here just makes me feel nostalgic for a place I was never actually at. That's why I'm so excited for the new Spider-Man game that's coming out because if it's anything like that first one, I'm not going to put it down. Are you having fun? Uh, I wasn't until I heard there was going to be a new Spider-Man game, so now I am. That's awesome. It is awesome. Back to you guys in the studio. That's what's been severely lacking in these Spider-Man games. And just judging by that trailer, I can tell that they've worked on fixing those mechanics and making it feel like you're playing a Spider-Man. Will it be quite the same? Will it be just like Spider-Man 2? Time will tell. But even if it's not, you can already tell just by looking at it that the mechanics have been reworked, ground up. It's nothing like anything we've seen in the last 10 years. And I'm really hoping that the swinging mechanic at least will be much more fun to play. As far as everything else goes, looks like they've pretty much copy and pasted Batman, which great games. There's no reason to mess with that formula. Change it up a little bit. Do your own Spider-Man things within it. 
but for the most part, Batman revolutionized the way a lot of beat-em-up beat -em type games are played these days, are made these days. You see it in games like Mad Max, which is made by the same studio, so that was a bad comparison. But you see it in a lot of games. Batman has started this formula that's really fun and really great, so why not use it, especially in a superhero game? But swinging is the key thing when it comes to Spider-Man, so... I'm really excited for this game. If we can get that swinging right, this could be my most played game of 2018. I think that's when it comes out. Next we have Days Gone. The reason why I'm excited for this game is because, I mean, zombie games, they're not overdone because, I mean, they kind of are, but it kind of always feels like you're ready for the next one. Zombie games, I don't know if they're ever going to get outdated. I'm always ready. There's been zombie games since Super Nintendo Zombie Ate My Neighbors. We're still going with them and they still seem just as fun. But the reason why I'm excited for this one in particular is because it's, it's an open world zombie game, which we've had a few of. But what we haven't had is just the massive amount of hordes that you seem to be able to take on at one time in this game. You see a lot of uh, movies like 28 Days Later and stuff like that where you have these extremely fast zombies but you haven't really had the hardware to be able to manage that many zombies on the screen at one time running at you at that speed. You being able to deal with it, interact with all of them in that, in that way before. And that's what I'm most excited about is I was watching this 20 minute gameplay of, of just running away from these zombies, just constantly trying to run away from them, turn around, shoot some of them down, turn around, shoot some of them down, trap them, explode some, and just trying to work away, chip away at this horde. And the ragdoll on the zombies, once you kill them, once you just start shooting into the horde and you see them falling over each other and stumbling over each other and trying to climb across each other. Again, it's not quite like anything I've seen in other zombie games. There's definitely an exciting aspect about that, of being chased down by literally thousands of zombies and having to try and deal with all of them at once and just watching that 20 minute gameplay I, I usually don't watch gameplay trailers like that but I was addicted I wanted to know how he was gonna get out how he was gonna survive and I just kept thinking the whole time I wish I was playing this I wish it was me chipping away at this horde the next game I'm looking forward to is Detroit becoming human I am worried about it though I'm a big fan of the games these guys have made before both heavy rain and Beyond Two Souls. I loved Heavy Rain. I adore that game. It's one of my one of my favorites for sure. This one just I'm not invested in it at all. I've been trying to get into it just by the trailers and stuff like that, but of yet I'm just I don't care about any of it. I don't care about any of the story. But I have had some of the most fun I have I have had in gaming it was playing some of their games in the past. So that's why I'm excited for it. I'm excited for those little moments. I'm excited for the, should I have done this? Should I have done that? The extreme repercussions that can come from some of the choices that you make in these games. I'm looking forward to those moments. And I can see myself getting invested in this world as long as it's delivered right, as long as it's given to me right. So I'm excited to try it. I'm excited to play it. I'm just hoping that I can get invested in this game the same way I got invested in their other games. And I'm really looking forward to it. Now I'm a little bitch when it comes to scary games, but the PT demo had me absolutely hooked. The first time I played it, I barely played it. I had my eyes closed. The second time, the eyes were open, but they were covered by my hands. The third time I played it, and it's a miracle that I got through it three times because it's me we're talking about. I loved it, and I managed to actually play it fully eyes open and enjoy the entire experience. So I was really looking forward to a new Silent Hills game and I, I like Norman Reedus a lot. So I was really looking forward to having him in a game produced by Kojima. It's just all the stars were aligning for me on that one. I was finally gonna be able to get into a horror game that I might actually finish and not chicken out of. And then it got canceled. So now I'm looking forward to Death Stranding, which isn't a horror game. It looks kind of creepy. It's an action game and now has, I, oh, I forgot how to pronounce his name, but it has the guy that was in Rogue One recently, as well as Norman Reedus, and is produced by Kojima Steel. It looks like a really, really interesting concept. The reason why I'm really excited for it is one, Kojima, two, Reedus, three, I mean, I guess Star Wars guy now, but lesser, and four, because I really want, this is the first game Kojima's done with his new studio after leaving. Konami and I'm just really excited for the game because I want it to do well I want to show it support and I want it to sell a lot and have a lot of praise I just want it to be a really fun enjoyable game whatever it ends up being whatever weird concoction of a game this man creates I want it to do really well because it, it, it will be good for him and screw Konami kind of thing You know, but also because I just want to really want to play the game It looks really interesting and I can't wait to find out more about this world that he's creating He's got a weird thing with babies recently. I don't, I don't know what it is. Babies in PT. It was a little fetus in the sink that was crying. And now you have these babies everywhere in this game. Something about babies. God of War looks really interesting. I look forward to playing it. I've actually 
never played a God of War game. So I don't know what to expect. From what I've seen of other God of War games, and what, I mean, I've, I've seen a lot of God of War. This looks nothing like any of that. It looks very, very different. It looks like a mix of God of War and The Last of Us. So I'm excited to play God of War for the first time. And one day, I swear, I'm going to go back through and play the old ones. Because, I, I mean, I know... I know how, I know you guys are angry at me because I know how great those games are supposed to be and the fact that I haven't played one, I, I mean, I know it's probably ludicrous, but I'm excited to play this. It looks visually very impressive. I didn't want to not mention it on this list because I know I'd get crucified if I didn't, but I haven't played any other ones. The reason why I'm excited is because I haven't played any of the other ones and I look forward to jumping on board with this one. Apart from that, I don't know much about God of War, so let me know down below why I should be excited for God of War. Now the final game on this list isn't an exclusive, but I, I, I mean I've done five already, I just want to talk about this really quick and that's Red Dead Redemption 2. I, I can't be more excited for anything that's happening next year more than this. I, there's so much coming out next year, so 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 much that I want to play that I am excited for. But Red Dead Redemption's in my top five favorite games of all time, and this second one looks incredible. We finally got a new trailer recently. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't be more excited. I think the new main role, character, lead character, looks amazing. I can't wait to play as him and just be generally badass. That, that first game, if you haven't played it, you owe yourself to go pick it up and play it. You can play it on Xbox One, you can play the 360 copy, put it in your Xbox One, backwards compatibility. It even ups it to 1080p, it makes it look even better and even nicer. So if you haven't played it, now's the time. It's seriously an amazing game. If you like any GDA, especially the new GDA 5, and you haven't played Red Dead Redemption, and you like Cowboys, I can't even with that entire thing. I, I, I wasn't even sure if we were ever gonna get a Red Dead Redemption 2, and the fact that we are has me more excited than any, anything that I've talked about recently. I, this is like Zelda Breath of the Wild level of excited for me. It may, it may even rival it. Like, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I need to sit down and have a good hard think about it, but I am very excited for Red Dead Redemption 2. We know nothing about it yet, but if you played the first one, I imagine they wouldn't stray too far from that formula. I'm just really looking forward to diving into a new story and hunting some bears and just being generally cool and 100%ing that game like I 100%ed the last one. This was just me nerding out and being super excited about the games that I want to play in the next couple of years. Let me know down below what games you might be excited for. Remember to like the video if you enjoyed it, if you had fun, if you're still at this point, remember to subscribe because it makes us best friends. Leave that comment down below and I'll see you in the next video. I, 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 I,